Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture as well as all the latest news from the world of archaeology. Pyramids of Egypt's famous 4th dynasty have a very specific internal structure. There was a multi-phase plan to build them and after looking at the Maidun Pyramid, the Menkore Pyramid and the Queen's Pyramids at Giza, we know that the first phase was the steps in a core. The Great Pyramid is no different, and researcher Craig McDonald shared his ideas on its step core just recently. He's long believed there was a clear evolution in Egyptian architecture, from a starbur to stack starbur, aka step pyramid, and from step pyramid to true pyramid. Many researchers, including Craig and myself, believe the Great Pyramid has a very specific stepped internal structure inside, and this stepped core is the most important phase of work in any pyramid project, because if the core was a success, the pyramid was basically a success. After completing the core, the builders then added the backing stones, and this was to turn it from a step pyramid to a true pyramid. And then the final stage was the casing, to give the pyramids their magnificent fine finish. When we look at the Great Pyramid today, it's been stripped of its white Chura limestone casing, but it's still a majestic sight to behold. The stones we're looking at are from the second phase of work. They're the backing stones, and if these were removed, we would find the original step core of the Great Pyramid. We don't know exactly what the core looks like today, simply because we can't see it, but I think the stepped core is the key to understanding a number of anomalies we see in the Great Pyramid. As I showed and explained in my last two videos, I believe there are four specific points within the pyramid that mark the edge of the core, and I'm using these observations to try and create a rough idea of what the inner core of the pyramid looks like. I believe the Queen's Chamber air channels end at the edge of the stepped internal core, an idea presented in a paper by researcher Lorenz van Vliet, and also shared independently by Craig MacDonald. And I also believe that two unique anomalies in the King's Chamber air channels also mark its edge. These are the four points, crudely marked on Rudolf Gantenbrink's CAD diagram, and, based on this, I've crudely added the stepped core as best as possible, and of course a lot of artistic license has gone into it. But I'm not doing this completely unscientifically. I've looked at diagrams of the Queen's Pyramid cores, and analysed data from the Pyramid of Menkore, and also tried to apply logic to my own diagram. If the pyramid went up a step at a time, you'd think there would be some kind of well thought out master plan to make the job as efficient as possible. For example, I've placed the floor of the Queen's Chamber at the base of the first step, and the floor of the King's Chamber at the base of the second step. The third and fourth steps are based on my observations from the four pyramid air channels, and right now the fifth and possible sixth step is complete guesswork. But at this stage in my research, there are two more things I want to look at, to see if they can help me gain any more clarity around the step core of the pyramid. These are the newly discovered 9 metre long north face corridor, and also the as yet unopened big void. Although our knowledge on these features is minimal at present, can they tell us anything about the core? Well, as I explained in a previous video, the pyramid's internal passages and chambers are all pretty much contained within the step core structure. And so, because of its position towards the outer northern edge of the pyramid, would this be the same for the north face corridor? So far I've been using the CAD diagram created by Rudolf Gantenbrink, but this does not accurately portray the north face of the pyramid around the entrance. To add the north face corridor to this picture, I've used an official diagram from the Scan Pyramids mission. Depending on how I position the lowest step on the northern side, 
the corridor is either wholly contained within a step, or wholly within the backing stones above the step. If it's built into the core, then it is an original phase 1 feature, but if it's built into the backing stone, it's more likely to be a later feature. As we can see, the corridor is very crudely built. You could say it's unfinished, and that's because of the nature of the stonework, but I think it is in fact exactly the way it's meant to look, because due to the fact it was very much hidden behind the pyramid chevrons, I don't think anyone was ever meant to go inside, except for those building the pyramid. For this reason, I thought the North Face Corridor had to be a Phase 1 original feature, and not created after the core was complete, because if it was later, I can't really see it having any logical function. And that's because if the core was complete, everything inside the pyramid is pretty much done. Well, apart from the final finish in the chambers and passages. But if the North Face Corridor was an original part of the Phase 1 core structure, well, it is an odd design, because it wouldn't be easy to enter and exit. It's horizontal, meaning it would be built into a step, and coming out of its near vertical face. I guess there could have been a ramp up to it, but it just seems a bit, well, clunky. There's a better way to do this. I'll come back to the North Face Corridor shortly, because before we go further I want to consider the Big Void, which, based on the data available from Scan Pyramids, is certainly wholly contained within the step core of the Great Pyramid. Right now we still don't know the exact shape of the Big Void, whether it's horizontal, inclined upwards or downwards, but new geophysical tests in the coming weeks should be able to confirm this. The known chambers and passages in the Great Pyramid have been extensively studied, and unless we've all missed something, there's no clear and obvious way into the Big Void. Therefore, I would suggest the nature of the Big Void is purely construction related, not a hidden burial chamber, not an antechamber full of precious objects for the afterlife and so on. Due to the size and position of the Big Void, many believe we're looking at another Grand Gallery. The Grand Gallery we all know looks to have had a dual function. As well as being the entranceway to the King's Chamber, according to the brilliant French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin, it also had a practical function. In books, papers, interviews and documentaries, he's explained very convincingly that the Grand Gallery was a counterweight mechanism, used to hoist the large multi-ton granite blocks high up into the pyramid. I made a video on Houdan's work many months ago, and I've linked it below in the description. So, the Big Void could well be another counterweight mechanism for the relieving chamber blocks located higher up, meaning we have two grand galleries stacked on top of each other. I believe this idea was first put forward by Jean-Pierre Houdin, and I've linked his most recent papers in the description below. It's complicated but important work. I'm not an architect or an engineer, and I'm in no way going into as much detail as Houdin, but for the sake of this video, I've replicated the Grand Gallery on the diagram, as a possible interpretation of the Big Void, and lined up the southern end of it with the highest blocks of the relieving chambers, like this, and included the ascending passageway as well, because according to Jean-Pierre Houdin, the ascending passageway was an integral part of the counterweight system housing a sliding ballast stone. On doing this, amazingly you can see how it lines up with the North Face Corridor. If the Big Void is another Grand Gallery, then the North Face Corridor could well have been the way inside. Or not, because it makes more sense for the entrance to the Big Void's ascending passageway to be here, at the top of a core step. In my opinion, it is a better design to have an access point into the core pyramid at the top of a step, 
instead of a crude tunnel running through it. So if my speculative diagram of the big void is correct, it means the North Face corridor must be built onto a core step. So the floor of the corridor is the top of a step. And staying with the North Face corridor, we can't fail to notice how it lines up precisely with the horizontal passage leading to the Queen's Chamber. So maybe once upon a time, the two passages were in fact connected, but the long corridor connecting the two has since been backfilled. I suggest that at the top of this first step, at the base of the second, there was an access point for workers and materials into the pyramid. You could go straight ahead towards the Grand Gallery and Queen's Chamber, or take the corridor up to the Big Void counterweight contraption. This would have been one of the most important and key access points into the pyramid during the construction of the core, and possibly the only way into the Big Void once the core was complete. But if I'm correct, it means the North Face Corridor is in fact a later feature built during the second phase of the pyramid's construction, when the backing stones were added to turn it into a true pyramid. But why? Well, when the pyramid was being finished, it was worth having an access point for the workers, a worker's entrance wider and taller than your average pyramid passage, so people and materials could get into the heart of the pyramid, without having to navigate the small and difficult descending and ascending passages. It was also worth having an access point into the big void, just in case anything went wrong. I think the pyramid builders basically made the North Face Corridor to extend the workers' entrance on the north side of the core pyramid, so they could carry on using it whilst the backing stones were being added around the pyramid. The North Face Corridor is a crude and rough construction, and that's because it was never meant to be seen by the public. It was functional and for the workers, and eventually, when the interior was finished and the backing stones were added, the full length of the access tunnels could have been backfilled with stones, sand and or rubble, blocking off access to the two corridors forever. I will add one idea and observation from researcher Craig McDonald, who thinks the stone wall at the end of the North Face Corridor could actually be the edge of the step core, and that's because it has a better finish than the stonework in the crudely made corridor. If he's correct, then the corridor has no relation to the internal chambers and passages in the Great Pyramid, and so it served a different function altogether. But I still like the idea the stones of the back wall actually cover a worker's entrance. And even if this is correct, questions and problems still remain. For example, what if the big void turns out to be horizontal? Well, the access point may still have been there, but only leading to the Grand Gallery and Queen's Chamber straight ahead, having no connection to the big void. So again, the corridor was created to extend the access point when the backing stones were being laid. And if the big void is horizontal or near horizontal, that means you would have gained access from the third step of the inner core, like this. Because we don't yet have all the data regarding the orientation of the big void, right now either option is feasible and with both options we can see how the big void could be accessed during construction, from either the North Face Corridor, or from the top of the third step of the core. If the latter turns out to be true, it's bad news for those hoping we'll ever get to go inside the big void, because there's no way in anymore, with the core structure lost beneath the backing stones. But if the former, well, there should be a way to find out, and maybe the second ascending passageway is just behind this wall, and we just need to clear out some loose blocks, stones, sand and rubble. Whatever the truth, and of course both options could be wrong, I do think the Big Void and North Face Corridor are construction related, and so I don't think there'll be any priceless artefacts waiting to be discovered. There could be workers' graffiti, remnants of ropes, tools, contraptions and so on, 
and to me they would be incredible finds. But I don't think the body of a pharaoh or any of his priceless relics are waiting to be discovered. Just like my last video, this one is also speculative, as I attempt to create a rough diagram of the core of the Great Pyramid, based on only a handful of observations on my own logical assumptions. And from this video, I'm going to make the assumption the North Face Corridor was built onto the first step of the core, because this to me does make the most sense. So, with my four data points from the four pyramid air channels, I'll now add a fifth, the floor of the North Face Corridor. And so my Great Pyramid inner step core now looks like this. For what it's worth, in my own opinion, this is how I think the big void is orientated, like a second grand gallery, and this is where I think you entered. So, right now at this point in my research project, this is how I think the Great Pyramid looked at the end of phase 1, when the stepped inner core structure was complete. But this project doesn't end just yet. There are also two other places we could also see the edge of the pyramid's core, and they are the descending passageway and also Alma Moon's tunnel. I would suggest we won't see anything in the descending passageway, because the corridor would be lined with stone to cover up any change from core stone to backing stone. And so, Alma Moon's tunnel is probably my best hope. After this, we also have to reanalyze the geophysical data from the 1980s and have a closer look at the backing stones, those we can all see today on the outer edge of the pyramid. Maybe there's a pattern in the thickness of each course that could tell us what's hiding beneath. All this and hopefully so much more to come. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.